Welcome to an example of 1D finite difference time domain method of solving for waves in inhomogeneous media. My name is Rahil and today I will be your host. Now we can go through Lilbrook theory. Consider a one dimensional space where there are only variations in the x directions. Assume electric field only has z component. Now Maxwell's equation gives that there exists a non zero h y. Now using the E algorithm, we can figure out the update equations. So from these update equations, we will be forming the 1DF DTD code. Now the rest of the theory involves use of absorbing boundary conditions, additive sources, and figuring out the reflection coefficient. Now let's explain the question. Now there are basically two structures that we have to make. One is the NAN periodic structure, the NAN period, and the NANNA Fibonacci structure. Now they are basically in homogeneous media that is one the refractive index of n is 3.5 and a is 1 and their thickness is also different now we have to find the reflections the method you should tackle the problem is we create the structures with air fill space on the right as well as left so that we can place the additive source in the left air space second thing is we choose a broadband gaussian source and run the simulation till the steady state then we take the interface figure out how the electric field has behaved throughout the throughout steady state and take the frequency components now after now let's go through the basic understanding of the 1d fdtd board now for each time step we are going to use the update equation for hy that is for mm which is our uh, iterate, iterating variable i goes to ke minus 1 ke is the number of steps we have in space and uh, the here the equal to symbol acts as an assigning operator where we have you know recurrent values being added again and again so it keeps changing and here we are absorbing boundary conditions basically e0 of 1 which is one which is the left boundary equal to e0 of 2 and e0 of k which is the rightmost boundary being e0 of k minus 1 and the update equation for ez acts in a similar way to hy but it requires the hy at that time so that basically comes later on and uh, e0 of ks is basically the additive source ks is the point is the source point now the main points or values we have to figure out in the x code involve the parameters that is basically delta x step in time that is 0 0.01 0 0.01 meters are chosen and delta t equal to delta x by c it is chosen such that the current factor is 1 and hence it's stable now the position of interface between the left air fill and the land structure is at index 17 for both cases for both the Fibonacci as well as the periodic land structure thickness of N2A is 1.618 which is basically root 5 plus 1 by 2 now let's go through a quick walkthrough of the MATLAB code looking at the code there are three main scripts the FDTD script the question 1A and question 1B now the FTD script is a simple one wherein you have a Gaussian pulse being sent and uh, the spread if it's 32 it's narrow band and if it's 6 it's broad band. Now I have sent both 6 and 32. Uh, first off let's, send, let's, see, let's see if we're sending 32 and uh, the code does two things. The first thing being it shows a movie of the Gaussian pulse moving in the domain. Second thing it stores the value of EZ at 70 which is basically the value of the interface and what I've done is I have found this value and stored it in the values.mat file so I don't have to calculate it you know basically every time so that I can run the RC commands or basically to find the reflection coefficient so this is what I've done in the FTTD code so if I'm going to run it you can see that first thing you'll see a movie of the Gaussian pulse moving in the absorbing boundary conditions are working peacefully because it's not reflecting back. This runs for 1200 steps of time. Okay, so similarly, the question 1a does the same thing. I have stored the values for both the Gaussian pulse broadband and narrowband, as you can see here 32 and 6. 
and uh, the only difference from the FDD code is the epsilon. Basically, we have an inhomogeneous medium, so you can see that there's a eta by epsilon or mm here, which shows the reflections. So I have first up, first up in the code, I have defined the structure and a periodic. Now, if I run it, you can see that you can notice the reflections. See, it has started reflecting and all those changes in the transmission of the Gaussian pulse you can see and this have run for 1200 steps and you know taken the steady state values okay now question 1b is exactly the same thing as question 1a but with a different structure so let's just run it so again we notice a value and uh, I have stored the this is simply the first part or uh, first use of this code the second use as i've said shows the interface values on to the e, the values dot mat so the values dot mat stores all these values from the ftdd vacuum which is basically the ftd code from the periodic nan and the fibonacci nan now uh, so this is basically the three main scripts now i'll talk about what these rc things does now the RC broad A is basically the broadband uh, in the Gaussian wave. What it does is it calculates the gamma or the reflection coefficient by taking the FFT of the incident broadband as well as the total field broadband, subtracts them here and uh, their FFTs it subtracts them and then it plots the this the reflection coefficient. Now I have clearly explained uh, this is basically what it does. I have, uh, I have uh, furthermore to add. Now let's look at the steady state snapshots for the broadband Gaussian incident wave. Now this is the output of the FTTD, FDTD code, wherein you just have the you know undisturbed Gaussian wave traveling, and then you bring in the periodic NAND structure, and you see all these uh, reflections. And then you see the Fibonacci NAND structure. Then we have the steady state snapshot for the narrow band Gaussian incident wave. Where we have increased the spread now. You can clearly see the increase in spread here. And then you have the uh, NAND periodic structure reflections and the NAND Fibonacci structure. Now let's look at the FFT results. For the broadband Gaussian wave. Now this is the FFT of the Gaussian pulse that we have put in the FDD code. That's basically the FFT of the incident wave. As you can see it goes till 0 0.6 into 10 raised to 13 hertz. So and this is the FFT of the EZ total which is equal to E incident plus E scatter. So here we can see this and this is the reflection coefficient this is basically the uh, e, e total minus E incident and we took the FFT of that and boom we have it from 0 to 1 and you can see all these uh, you can see the reflection coefficient for each frequency I have taken it to the to be the range from 0 to 6 into 26 because as you can clearly see the it only goes from 0 to 0.6 into 10 to 13 because we only need little there this is a single segment of the Gaussian wave. The rest of it is um, basically you can say zero. And now we are we are comparing it with the FEM structure. As you can see, this part this part is actually coinciding with what I have found in FTD, FTD. And this is the narrow band Gaussian wave. Is a total the the this is the narrow band Gaussian wave on the periodic NAND structure this is the reflection coefficient for the narrow band Gaussian signal now we're looking at the broadband Gaussian wave on the Fibonacci NAND structure so again the FFT of the signal the EZ total and we have the reflection coefficient for the broadband now the narrow band I run, I run, I run on this the same idea we have the reflection coefficient on the narrow band. and these are basically the findings that we require basically the narrow band reflection coefficients as well as the on the NAND structure as well. Here is the main reference that I have used. I will put the link down below and thank you for your patience.